So today we saw Tesla stock close downwards along with the overall market like the S&P 500 also have a big drop for today as well. Now this makes sense because in yesterday's video I talked about how it's much more probable that for Thursday and Friday we're going to be closing red. In fact I want to go ahead and show something from yesterday's video something in particular. And so if we have good job data coming out we may see this like weird situation where although that's good the markets may start to panic because then the markets might be like, oh snap, you know, we may have to have, you know, the Fed's hike. Now I want to go ahead and stop the clip from yesterday right there and talk about what exactly happened today that pretty much I said yesterday. So we had amazing job data from the ADP report with a big jump from the leisure and hospitality sector. So just as I was saying in yesterday's video, typically in a normal market, having good job data would traditionally be seen as bullish, right? That would be seen as good news. And that's obviously because of the reason that, you know, if Americans are getting jobs, well, that's good because they're getting paychecks. And if Americans are getting paychecks, they could go out and spend money, they could stimulate the economy and hopefully buy Teslas, right? However, one of the reasons why in yesterday's video I said, hey, most likely if we have good job data, we're gonna close a little bit lower for the week is because we recently had the FOMC meeting minutes where we heard basically the whole FOMC committee you know all agree on the fact that they are going to have to be a little bit more aggressive with hiking rates and that the battle with inflation is still not yet over right and then of course we also had the New York Fed president talk about how hey you know this data coming in recently you know in the next couple of days is going to be very important because hey if the data comes in strong that just means that we're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive right because of course you know there's still an issue with inflation if Americans are getting jobs well that means that they're going to continue spending and this stubborn inflation is going to present more of a battle for the you know uh, federal reserve and that you know they're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive and actually hike a little bit more which is obviously bad for the economy right so this is why it's important to you know not just look at you know stocks from a myopic perspective i know a lot of people here on youtube they talk about you know tesla or any other stock and they only look at the fundamentals or they only talk about the technicals but you have to be aware of all the catalyst events you have to be aware of alternative data and you have to be aware of the economic conditions going on, right? I'm one of the very few people here on YouTube that, first of all, that understands how to do fundamental and technical analysis, very rare, but also am you know, aware that you have to pay attention to several data points to really see the bigger picture of what's going on. And so, you know, a lot of times I get like this joke of an email of people saying, hey, you, you know, where's the crystal ball? And although I'm flattered, right? At the end of the day, I don't have a crystal ball. It's just that I'm looking at much more data points than a lot of the other people you may watch on YouTube. Now looking at Tesla from a technical perspective, this may actually present a good opportunity for the idea of a potential short squeeze. And I wanna go ahead and explain why by just looking at this chart. So we have this gap right around over here where Tesla rallied up after we had great delivery numbers. However, you know, there's something called a gap fill in the technical space where, you know, typically when you have major gaps, eventually they have to get filled. And so if we see Tesla stock fall down an additional 4%, well, that would fill up that gap. But guess what? That gap is also at the same level where there's a lot of volume by price. Now, when there's a lot of volume by price, that means there's a lot of a, you know, a big battle between the bid and the ask. And that's why we have areas where, you know, we create supports and resistances around these areas with a lot of volume by price. And so it would actually be kind of good to see Tesla fill up that gap and actually see that area as a little bit of a support and then bounce up from there. Because as we start falling down, guess what short sellers are going to do? Well, they're going to start increasing their short bets on Tesla, right? Especially as we get closer to the earnings date for Tesla. They're going to speculate that Tesla is going to have a bad free cash flow and bad profit margins, that this is going to drive Tesla downwards. And so this is going to increase, you know, their, their capital in terms of, you know, allocating towards short Tesla, right? And so obviously, if we have more short sellers kind of jump on the boat to short Tesla, but then we have Tesla have good earnings numbers, right? And, and they actually beat earnings and beat Wall Street's expectations. Well, guess what would happen to those short sellers? We would have an increased amount of short sellers who are dead wrong, who would then have to cover their shorts, right? Now, in yesterday's video, I said, hey, you know, right now, we don't have too much of like a situation where a short squeeze is possible, although Tesla's one of the most shorted mega caps out there. Typically, we wanna see 10% for a short squeeze, but this current situation right here 
could help us load more shorts on for Tesla as it falls down. And as Tesla, you know, gets closer to earnings, well, we could, you know, squeeze out the shorts, right? Of course, we have to stay data dependent. I'm not over here predicting what Tesla is going to do for their, um, you know, earnings, because at the end of the day, I still have to wait for the data to come out because maybe the short sellers could be right. You know, maybe Tesla actually had a bad quarter, although I doubt it. You know, we're going to have to obviously stay data dependent. Now, tomorrow we have a wave of more job data coming out with the U.S. non-farm payroll, the U.S. unemployment rate and then hourly wages. However, we already had the big shock in the job data from today that it wouldn't really make sense for the market to have a huge drop for tomorrow unless the numbers were just drastically insane for tomorrow. I do expect, you know, things to be a little shocking, but not as shocking as they were today because the market's gonna be much more prepared. However, we have to pay attention to what's coming next week, which is going to be a very volatile week with the sense that we have a ton of Fed speakers speaking, right? On Monday, we have uh, Fed Vice Chair Michael Barr speaking. Then we also have Mary Daly speaking. We have the Cleveland uh, Fed President speaking. Then, of course, we have the Consumer Credit Report. But then Wednesday is a huge day for the market because that's when we have the CPI report come out and the core CPI report. And then we really get to see where we're at with inflation because, of course, if inflation's still sticky... And that's going to be a little tough. But then, of course, we also have two more Fed speakers coming out uh, to speak on um, that Wednesday. But we have to also remember that not every Fed speaker that's going to be speaking is an actual voting member, right? We have to pay attention to that, right? Some people may speak and they don't actually have a vote in what the FOMC says. But it's good to listen to what they say. But then the major thing afterwards is then the Fed's uh, beige book which is basically information collected from the 12 Federal Reserve districts. And it kind of gives us an idea of where the economy is based on the data from all the different districts. So we have a major week going ahead with a lot of data. And of course, as I always say, we want to stay data dependent. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button so that you guys don't miss out on any future uploads and you guys are up to date on what's currently going on. But if you guys want more in-depth information on what's currently going on with the overall market and you want access to my daily trade ideas, make sure to check out the first link in the description below, which is going to be a link for the Push and Profit private group, where you have access to a whole bunch of video lessons where I talk about what I look at when it comes to trading and investing. And also you have access to my daily briefings where I pretty much talk about what's going on in the overall market and I provide some updates and trade ideas on what I'm going to be looking at. So definitely check out that first link in the description below. But with that being said, guys, you know, I want to talk about my view on Tesla. Now, although we may experience some more volatility for Tesla, I always say that in my long-term portfolio, I am still very bullish and very optimistic for the long-term. Guys, we have to really understand what Tesla is doing and how they're really navigating the EV space and how, you know, they're basically just having a huge advantage up against all the other legacy automakers. And so until that advantage is wiped away and it's gone, you know, I'm going to stay very bullish on Tesla. And this is finally the opportunity for me to perhaps bat, you know, buy more shares of Tesla in my long-term portfolio. I've been saying it probably for three weeks for those of you guys that have been watching my videos of me saying, man, when can I add more shares of Tesla? It keeps going up. This might be the opportunity where, you know, I could finally load up on some more shares. Um, again, you know, it's, I don't always buy equally every month. I like to wait to, you know, for a dip. And then after the dip happens, I wait for confirmation of an uptrend that we're, you know, bouncing off from that dip. I kind of take that Warren Buffett approach of, you know, being fearful when everyone's greedy, meaning I don't want to buy it since Tesla's going up, but then being greedy when everyone's fearful, when everyone's panicking, you know, that's when I want to buy some more shares of Tesla and hopefully I have capital saved up when that happens. And luckily right now I can, but you know, some, there's times where I don't have capital when that happens, right? It, it, it just is what it is. Now, you know, when it comes to my short-term trading account, I say this all the time. First of all, I do want to just uh, distinguish the difference, right? Obviously, you know, long-term investing and short-term trading are two separate vehicles and you don't want to mix that up. I think a lot of people on my channel get confused because they think I'm talking about Tesla in the long term and in the short term. That's why I like to divide it up, right? So in my short term trading account, right, an account that has much less capital where I just trade, you know, the ups and downs of the market. I am, you know, still on my word that I don't plan on shorting Tesla, even if it's going down just because, 
In my opinion, it's honestly too risky to short Tesla, especially when it's majorly shorted by a lot of investors at the moment anyways. And there's always opportunities to short something else like the overall S&P 500. You know, I just don't like shorting Tesla because you really can get your face ripped off once there's catalyst news. Tesla is a very sensitive and volatile stock where, you know, something happens and it can move up like 4% immediately in a day, right? So I don't plan on shorting Tesla even if it goes down in my short term trading account. And I'm in fact just going to be waiting to uh, go long on Tesla even in my short term trading account. I'm going to wait for that dip. And then once we see that uptrend, I'll probably start buying some shares and trading them, you know, maybe do a swing trade or do some calls. So that's just my perspective on, you know, Tesla, both from a long term approach and also a short term approach. Again, I do want to emphasize that you should never trade or invest based on anyone else's opinion, even my opinion. And you should always do your due diligence and only trade and invest in what you guys see value in, right? So of course, you know, I talk about what I see value in Tesla, but some of you guys may disagree with me and that's completely fine. I mean, that's just what the market is. People agree and people disagree. That's why stocks go up and down, right? Everyone's uh, debating what the price should be, right? So definitely um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully I did provide some utility. Again, make sure to like and subscribe. And before you guys go, make sure to watch this next video right over here. And I'll see you guys on that next video. Take care, guys.